Hello and welcome, it's me, Nathan, your friendly neighborhood support engineer, and in today's video we're going to be talking about time-based routing. Now specifically, we're going to be tackling the built-in predefined times, such as office time and holiday times. Now when it comes to a predefined time-based uh, routing solution, we offer two options. One's going to be our office time, and the other will be our holiday time. Now, the cool thing about having predefined time options on the PBX is that you do not have to constantly remember every time you create an inbound or even outbound route um, on what time your company's moving to. Like many of us installers, we're going to be installing these PBXs at multiple locations, and it's not very likely that we're going to remember everyone's office and holiday times. So we could even give uh, users access to the time settings in which they can actively change these settings themselves. Another real advantage to being able to edit these options is that you never have to go into your inbound routes and maybe play around with a specific time condition, which I'll show you later. Um, you can then just insert these predefined times and it's really cool because we can set a time, let's say in office between nine and 12, and that will be our first time slot. And this will also apply for the holiday time as well. We could even create more than one time slot for office or holiday. So we can say, hey, you know what? We're gonna go from one to five. Other options also include selecting what day of the week we would like to use. And as you can see, my company works Monday through Friday. We can even set specific months as well as what day a specific rule will apply. Now, the only difference between office and holiday times when it comes to feature settings is that on holiday, you actually have the ability of selecting future years. So you can then apply what year some of the other rules will then apply. So I can say, hey, let's do 2020. We'll actually create a holiday for July the 4th. So that's going to be the basics of creating our own built-in time measures. I will sprinkle in. Uh, inbound multiple modes. Now, even though this doesn't really have any bearing on office or holiday time schedulings, inbound multiple mode is a definitely a handy way of manipulating inbound routes on the fly as they come in. So I will be going over that in my example. All right, so first things first, we're gonna go ahead and create our holiday and office times. Just so you can see what that looks like. So in order to do this, we're gonna to go to system settings, scroll down, click on time settings, and then from this page, we can set the UCM's time as well as create the office time and holiday times. Let's first off start with creating a office time. Now just to keep things simple from the very beginning, I'm going to kind of mimic what we did in our PowerPoint. So I'm going to create an office time that's going to start from 9 to 12, have a lunch break uh, all the way up to 1, and start again ending at 5. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. Let's go ahead and click on Add. Now I know for our office time we will be working Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday through Friday. Um, let's go ahead and create the start time. They will start at 9 o'clock and then they will end that shift at 12 o'clock. There we go. So that's going to be our morning shift. Now, if we click on advanced options, we have the month and days that we can select, but I do not need to do that for what we're doing here. I'm going to save that. And there we go. That's our first part of our office time. Now, as you can see, I can add another office time, which really gives us a lot of flexibility when creating different office time scenarios. So let's go ahead and now do the ending shift going from now, starting at one o'clock, so 1300, and then we're going to end at five o'clock, so 17, and this will apply Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and we'll save that. Perfect. 
So that is office time being set up. Now the cool thing about this is if you give your customers access to the time settings, they don't ever have to manipulate the inbound routes. All they have to do is change the time settings here for that to be then reflected on inbound routes. So you won't have to worry about them messing anything up. Now today is Thursday, May 27th, 2021. I'm gonna go ahead and create a holiday for today. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and click add. And I'm gonna call this one test. Uh, cool thing here, you can actually have a memo if you want to do that. It is an optional field. As you can see, I can select years in the future. Let's go ahead and enable May on the 27th. And as you can see, similar to office time, we even have our advanced options. Just in case you might want to select a Monday through Friday or maybe a Sunday or Saturday holiday but we're not going to need that for our test. Let's go ahead and save and apply the settings. Now I know you may be confused at why, why I'm putting this today, but when we create our inbound routes and we do add a holiday time, you'll see how that gets reflected in our inbound routes. And as a reminder, you could add as many holidays as needed and the same goes for office time. But with that being said, let's go ahead, go into our inbound routes and show you how I like to set up inbound routes for office and holiday times. We'll go ahead, navigate over to extension slash trunks, and then click on inbound routes. All right, now that we're at the inbound routes page, let me go ahead and show you around so you can kind of get your bearings when creating inbound routes. Um, as you can see, we can select from our various trunks here. I have a VoIP trunk and analog. Now I will be demoing the SIP trunk only, um, but let's go ahead and then add an inbound route. Now here are a couple fields that will determine how our PBX will route calls. So first thing, uh, we have a pattern here. Now typically I will use X period and plus X period that will catch everything. Now, if you're using analog lines, there will be a static S here in which you don't need to do anything. Now, I do have a tutorial on inbound routes that goes in depth on all these settings, so I'd highly recommend that you check that out. But beyond that, we're going to stick to the topic at hand. Here are some of the other options that will affect our routes, such as our inbound multiple mode, we have modes default and mode one, as well as our default destination and our time conditions. Each function that I mentioned is going to have a great effect on how calls get routed to their destination. Now, before I start applying some of these settings, I think it will be best to first understand how our PBX will order these rules in order to determine how a call is going to go through its routing structure. So in order to do that, let's go ahead and go back to our PowerPoint presentation and better explain this. Now, whether your PBX is the VoIP analog line or PRI circuits, it's all going to do call handling basically the same. One of the first things that we're going to be considering is what trunk we're going to be coming on. Uh, you will have to create an inbound route for each one of your trunks and it's very important that you pay attention to what trunk you're on when creating your inbound route. Next we have the matching pattern. So if we forget to add a pattern um, or a pattern does not match and this is specifically for PRI and VoIP trunks on analog lines you just have a static S which when it goes hot it just allows the call to come in, uh, but we'll return a 404 not found or a busy signal if we do not have a matching pattern. That's why I use X period and plus X period uh, to catch anything that may come in on those trunks. After that, our PBX will take a look if it's in the default or mode one for the inbound multiple modes. Each mode can have its own series of routing settings and time conditions that are applied to it, giving you more than one choice and the ability of changing routes on the fly. 
Next, our PBX is going to see if there's any active time conditions or if there's any time conditions at all. If there is, it will then be routed to that time condition set destination. If there's not a time condition set, whether it's office time or holiday or even a specific time, it will then just move down to the default destination. So if you're going to set up a very basic call route, all you really need to do is make sure you have a matching pattern and a default destination for it to go to. Now that we better understand how our PBX will look at each routing parameter when it makes a determination on where to send a call, let's go ahead and program that and see it working in action. All right, now that we're back to the inbound route, let's go ahead and create our first inbound route. As always, I'm going to use X period and plus X period, especially if I don't know how the call is going to come in, especially on VoIP trunks or PRI lines. This always works. We're going to keep this simple and we're only going to set up the default destination. It's going to be the bare bones setup. So let's go ahead and set the default destination to our out of office time. So currently, my out of office destination for this setup will be extension 1001. That's going to be my front desk assistant's voicemail. Now I know you're wondering why I do that as the default destination and not the in office time. But once I explain further, it'll make more sense. So let's go ahead and save this change. Apply. And call into that trunk. Perfect. As you heard, that is now working. So anytime we call into this trunk, it goes to the default destination because it has no other options to really go to um, and leaves a voicemail. Now, let's go ahead and add our time condition for in office time. So we're going to go right here, add time condition. Now, you do have the ability of doing a specific time condition in which you have some of the options as you saw on the office time and holiday time options page. I like this option too because it allows us to see what time is being included when you have it set up on your inbound routes. But that's not what we're here for today. We want to actually see the office time. So as you can see, we do have a lot of options for office time. We have office time out of office time, which will just be the inverse of what our office time is set to, holiday, out of holiday, or we have the combination of the two, out of office or holiday, office time or out of holiday. That way you could simplify these time conditions with one rule. I'm going to keep it simple and click on office time. And for my destination, it's going to be my clientele's extensions. There we go. Let's go ahead and save and apply these changes and then test it again. Perfect. So now my client tells extensions ringing, so we know that office time is currently working. And as you can see from my computer's time, it is 416, matching what we had for the office time. Now currently as it stands, if we're operating in office time, we'll ring extension 1000. If we're out of office time, we will ring 1001 voicemail. Now, if you remember correctly, I had set a holiday for today, and that might seem counterintuitive, but it's going to be demonstrating the hierarchy of our time condition table here. So I'm going to go ahead, create a time condition. This is going to be for holiday, and then I'm going to send the destination to our holiday greeting, which I ended up making extension 2000's extension greeting. So when we call that one, we should hear a slightly different busy message. So let's go ahead and save that and put it at the very top. Save. Apply changes. Now before I call in, I'm going to go ahead and kind of go over how our system is going to route this call. So currently we don't we do not have inbound multiple mode enabled, but we do have some time conditions. So naturally it will look for the time conditions on where it should go. 
Because I put holiday on top, it will take priority over our office time. So if I call in again, let's hear what message we get. Thank you for calling Nathan's Pet Grooming Services. You've currently reached us on holiday. Please leave a voicemail. And there we'll we go. Music. So I got the holiday greeting. And the holiday greeting I configured with extension 2000's voicemail. Now, in a more realistic scenario, you're not going to always be going to Extension's voicemails, but rather the destinations of like IVRs or ring groups or so forth. This is strictly for de demonstration purposes. Now, watch what happens if I take the holiday and put it down below. And we're going to go ahead and save that. And apply those changes. Now, because our PBX will read this from top to bottom, it's first come, first serve. Whoever's at the top, if it matches that destination and within that time condition, it'll go to that extension. So let's go ahead and try that again and verify our results. See that? It had now rang in our in-office time. So it's very important that when you create time conditions, you also pay attention to where they are in the sequence list. Now if I'm going to be doing this correctly, I'm always going to have my holiday on top of my office time so that if a holiday is in effect, it will know to ring there first. Now if a holiday is not currently within the time condition or is not programmed for that specific day, it will naturally ring over to the office time. So with that being done, we can also set up inbound multiple mode. And we do that just by enabling the modes now currently, we've created all these rules in our default mode, but mode 1 gives us the same options, but in a different call routing scheme. So mode 1 even has a default destination, as well as time conditions. Now for the majority of our customers, they tend to use mode 1 to dynamically switch to out of office, if for some reason, at the last hour of the day, there is no business and they want to pack up and leave early for work. So I'll go ahead and set the default destination to the receptionist voicemail. Now as you can see, our destinations have gotten a lot more complicated. We can see what's a part of default mode as well as mode 1. So let's go ahead and now apply changes. Now the cool thing about inbound routes is we can even see what the current mode is. And right now it is default mode. Now if you see at the very top here we have set inbound mode. This gives us the ability to enable it and enable the feature codes to uh, enable default mode or mode 1. Or what I like to do is create a BLF subscription number. I'm going to make this 999. And by the way, you cannot use currently used extensions. So you must use a BLS subscriber number of something that does not exist. So let's go ahead and save and apply. Apply changes. Now the only thing to do after this is to create a BLF on the phone that monitors 999. And that will give us the ability to hit that BLF and actively change the mode. So I had already taken the liberty to create that BLF. Now let's go ahead and watch as it goes from default mode to mode 1. Mobile. Inbound route. Set to mode 1. There we go. Now that we got that confirmation, we can then refresh the web page. And as we can see, it is now set for mode 1. Let's go ahead and call back into the system. Perfect. So because now that we're in mode one, we went to the user extensions voicemail. Let me go ahead and disable it. Mobile. Inbound route. Set to default mode. Refresh the page to verify it's in default mode. And let's call it again. Thank you for calling Nathan's Pet Grooming Services. You've currently reached us on holiday. Please leave a voicemail and we'll get back to you as soon as we're back working. Thank you. Perfect. Now it went to holiday because I switched our holiday back. 
to being at the top of our time conditions. So we verified that's working correctly. Now just to go over an overview of mode one, we can also add our time conditions and exceptions here. For example, we might want to include a time condition that also specifies holiday. So even if they do switch it to mode one, and it just so happened to be a holiday in which they had mode one enabled, it will still give us the correct greeting. So let's set it to time condition holiday, destination, voicemail to extension 2002, which I set the holiday to, save that, and apply changes. So because today is currently set as a holiday, even if I revert back to mode one and call again, what I should hear is the holiday voicemail greeting. So let's go ahead and do that. Mobile, inbound route, set to mode one. Perfect. Now let me go ahead and call into that trunk again. Thank you for calling Nathan's Bedroom Services. You've currently reached us on holiday. Please leave a voice Perfect. and we'll get back to you. Perfect. Now that you can see kind of how our holiday and office time works, as well as having the extra bonus of using the inbound multiple mode, you can play around and experiment with different combinations of settings until you get the feel of how to get this to work yourself. Thank you for watching this grand stream tutorial. I hope you found this helpful, so please go ahead, give us a subscribe, click on the notification bell so you can receive our notifications. Please like this video and give us any additional feedback on maybe future videos you'd like us to do. And as always, you have a good one.